Welcome to another episode of The Journey After Birth. I'm Elizabeth Vowell. I'm an anchor and reporter with WAP TV in Baton Rouge, but I'm also a mom. And I know motherhood is full of joy, but it's also full of challenges. Some that make you stronger and some that make you think you may never overcome them, especially in those first few weeks and months. That's why in this series, we're talking about a few things I wish I had known when I became a mom. Those topics that are kind of hard to talk about or you wonder, am I the only one who feels like this? We partnered with Women's Hospital and their team of experts to start the conversation and let moms know, no, you are not alone. In this episode, we're talking with certified lactation consultant, Cynthia Evans, about all the things you wanted to know about breastfeeding, but we're too afraid to ask. Here we go. WAFB's The Journey After Birth with Elizabeth Bow, sponsored by Women's Hospital. So for today's segment, we're talking about breastfeeding, but not just breastfeeding. It's all the things you wanted to ask, but maybe we're too afraid to bring up. And we have someone very special with us, Cynthia Evans. Uh, give us a little background about what you do and your experience with breastfeeding. Okay, so um, I'm a registered nurse. I've been here for 22 years at Women's Hospital. Um, I actually started as a nurse tech in 1998 and then graduated in 99 as a nurse. Um, I work in mother baby and um, cross trained to lactation and for about the past 10 years been in lactation solely. Mm -hmm. When you talk about <clears throat> breastfeeding, I think that's probably, this is probably one topic of pregnancy and motherhood that brings out the most opinions in people. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So what, uh, talk, let's, let's kind of start with some of the basics. What are the benefits of breastfeeding? Oh, um, numerous benefits. Um, you know, first of all, for the mom, um, I'd say the, the most beneficial is um, the bonding. You know, mm -hmm. the bond that, that they create with, that, with their newborn is just wonderful and priceless. Mm -hmm. um, not to mention, you know, for mom, it you know, can decrease the risk for uh, female cancer for her, for, which is huge. You know, um, it's convenient, very convenient, saves money. Um, and several other things for mom, but you know, leading into baby, um, for baby, um, same thing. Decreased risk of childhood obesity, um, diabetes, helps their GI tract. Um, it's the natural, it's a natural formula. It's the nutrients, the antibodies, um, just, you know, I could go on and on about the benefits, but those are the the, the main ones that I would say would stick out in a, a new mom's head. Mm -hmm. So I breastfed um, my little girl for about a year, um, got it exclusively for about six months and then I That's had to start awesome. supplementing because I went back to work. Yes. Uh, but I do remember those first 48 hours after, or I remember parts of the first 48 hours after I gave birth of it just being, you're so overwhelmed. You have a tiny new human, they're crying, you're right. trying to figure out how to feed them. <laughs> you have nurses and consultants coming in and out and in and out. I know I got so many instructions from the lactation consultants when, during my stay, I don't remember any of them. Right. What is your, that's such an overwhelming time period. If you had to, I guess, give one thing for mom to remember or keep in mind in that 48 hours, if there is anything she can keep in her head, what would it be? Um, first, I would say enjoy your baby. Love your baby. You know, that skin to skin contact is number one. You know, when your baby's born, your baby should go right to your chest and do skin to skin. And I think that right there is, um, just something that you're going to remember, you know, and that, that will lead into, um, and it is overwhelming. We come in, we bombard you with tons of information, instructions, you know, um, but I think, you know, knowing, um, you know, those first two to three days, the amount of colostrum that you will provide for your baby is enough. That is the number one question. Is my baby getting enough? I can't measure it. Is my baby getting enough? And as long as your baby is feeding eight to 10 times a day, which is a big number, but an overwhelming number. Um, and so we, we are constantly reminding, you know, let's, let's wake the baby up, let's do some skin to skin. Um, and I think knowing what to expect those first 24 hours, that it's, it, it's okay. You know, if your baby's sleepy and your baby is stable, we're gonna do skin to skin. Skin to skin is so um, beneficial. It's the next best thing to breastfeeding those first 24 hours. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's so regulating. And so again, I could go on and on and overwhelm you with all those details, but um, knowing what to expect those first 48 hours, you know, first 24 hours, the baby's going to be sleepy. It's okay if they don't wake up and eat 30, 45 minutes, you know, um, just like as if they were going to take a bottle. It, it's different, you know, mm -hmm. um, and so just being skin to skin is so regulating. It's regulating their blood sugar, their heart rate, their temperature. So 
going back to that, knowing what to expect those first 24 hours leading into the second 24 hours of life, which mm -hmm. is that cluster feeding phase. And that is extremely overwhelming. You know, um, you can ask our night nurses. They deal with that nonstop, mm -hmm. you know. But um, And so, again, knowing what to expect leading into it, you know, maybe educate just yourself just a little bit. Um, take advantage of of our resources and um, kind of know so you're not so overwhelmed you know those first 24 to 48 hours um, mm -hmm. and then leading into what happens the next you know now you're day three four and you're at home and you don't have us coming in overwhelming you with all of that information so kind of knowing what to expect then you know mm -hmm. when that volume does you know your mature milk is present at that point and okay now what do I do? You know, mm -hmm. I have all this milk now. Now what do I do? <laughs> you know, right? And you know that was I remember that that moment of um, my mother had come to stay and help us out in, in those first couple of days, and I remember she told my husband to go get some cabbage leaves because yeah. she, she well your milk's <laughs> going to come and you might get engorged. And I went, wait, what's that? What does that right. mean? Right. Uh, so, and that's a question a lot of people have is when that milk comes in, it can be so uncomfortable if you're very full. Things get very hard. And if you just have never experienced before, it's kind of hard to explain, but you know, you, your breasts feel like rocks sometimes yes. and it's very uncomfortable. Right. So what, what's your advice for women of the what's next when that milk does Right. Work? So first I think knowing that that's okay when that happens, that is your body telling you, Hey, you've done your job. You have, I have now made this milk for you and your baby, you know, mm -hmm. so that that's your body telling you that it's, it's normal. You just have to work through it, you know. Um, best way is to move milk frequently. You know, you cannot leave your breasts overly full for longer than a two to three hour period. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we say let's feed your baby eight to ten times a day. So technically that's about every three hours or so. Mm -hmm. However, if your body is telling you at two hours that your breasts are feeling like that, don't wait to the three hour mark. Go ahead and move milk. Mm -hmm. If your baby's not ready, then go ahead and pump, t pump until you're comfortable. So. Moving milk frequently to make your body, you know, your breast comfortable and softer is, is kind of the key there, you mm -hmm. know, um, and not be so rigid as far as every three hours or every four hours. You know, listen to your body there. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes you can do that and that still happens. You know, if you're an overproducer or you just, you know, you, like I said, you've done your job there. So, um, you know, heat, warmth can, can really help to soften those breasts, those breasts um, you know, massaging. Um, your baby's the best pump. If your baby has a good latch, good positioning, good latch, and your baby can transfer effectively, then you should get some relief from your baby. And mm -hmm. then after that, you would pump to soften, you know. Talking about latching, I know uh, that was a big struggle for me and my little girl. She had a lot, really hard time latching. Mm -hmm. And so even for me, for the first several weeks, it's hard. Was, it was uncomfortable. It was very hard. And I was, I was very personally, it was very important for me to breastfeed. I have uh, right. two older sisters and my mother who, uh, I know I've, I've talked to you about my mom who yes. she's helped, I don't know how many people, she's not certified or anything, but she just has that's a lot okay. of life that's experience. Yes. She was breastfeeding that's, before that's it was cool. Good. So it was important for me to do that, but I still found it was, it was a struggle. I'm not going to lie. And I, it is. that caught me off guard right. personally, because I watched my sisters go through this and they had such an easy time of right. it. And you said something that I thought was really important to address is don't compare yourself to Absolutely. someone else's experience. Absolutely. Elaborate on that for me. So, you know, kind of like in your situation, you just kind of thought, okay, well, this is going to be easy. I've seen my sisters do it, my mom do it, you know, but everybody's anatomy is different. Um, everybody's capacity is different, you know, so, um, and everybody's experience is completely different. So, um, you know, it's great to take in everybody's advice and, and look and opinions, but at the same time, you know, it's so individualized. So you, it's, you can't beat yourself up for the fact that your best friend may overproduce and you underproduce, you know, mm -hmm. that is, you know, that's, and it's hard to do, of course, especially with social media and, you know, um, looking at all these, you know, different opinions and support groups and different things like that, you know, it, it's hard, but, you know, you have to kind of just take a step back, look at your experience and, and you know, and go from there, so. And that is one of the things, you know, a lot of times I'll tell my moms when I'm leaving the room as I, as I know they're going home, you know, give it two to three weeks, you mm -hmm. know, it is natural. It is the best thing for your baby, but sometimes it's not easy. And I think you're doing a good job. You're doing a good job no matter what you're doing, you know, so take a step back, enjoy your baby and give it, give it a good two to three weeks. And it gets much easier mm -hmm. after that, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so that brings me to another question you were talked about um, 
uh, when we were talking earlier about the importance of regulating your milk because it takes several weeks, right, before your it body kind of figures out, mm -hmm. okay, this is what I'm going to produce. So what are, why are those first couple of weeks so important and what can you do to make sure that you are you know, are regulating and that right. you're getting the right amount of volume every time. Good. Yeah, that's great. So the first, another thing I'll tell them, those first three weeks, like I said, are very important. So, um, you know, it's, it's a hormonal shift, you know, in your body. And, um, when you're, when your baby's breastfeeding or when you're pumping to stimulate, um, it's, you're, you're telling your body, Hey, let's make some milk here. Let's make some more milk. So when you stimulate and move milk, if once that volume is established and your body detects that and detects, okay, we need to make some more milk. So mm -hmm. that's why it's important. Those eight to 10 feedings or eight to 10 stimulation periods with a pump to establish and maintain that supply. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, at the end of your three weeks, um, you're, gonna, you're going to continue that, but your body is going to adjust to the baby's needs. So a lot of moms will call and say, well, now I don't feel like I did it two weeks. I'm not nearly as full as I was. Well, that's your body adjusting to your baby's needs. You have now established your full mature milk volume and you can transition into those to an easier, an easier time, mm -hmm. you know, but you know, that uh, going back to a good latch, a good latch leads to good milk supply, mm -hmm. you know, and so that's so important. And again, so overwhelming those first couple days of trying to learn how do I position myself? How do I latch, you know? And that's just, again, when it kind of take a step back and take it all in, mm -hmm. you know, and, and bring that home with you as far as, okay, let me think what she said. Okay, I need to put my pillow here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need to hold her, you know, my baby's, you know, head or body this way. So um, it is overwhelming, but, you know, getting that all together for that first two to three weeks is just so important. Mm -hmm. It really is. And then once you see as it, you transition, it does get easier, mm -hmm. you know, and if not, that's what we're here for. <laughs> you know? So after your body kind of establish regulates the milk supply a little bit does your volume change a heck of a whole lot will it fluctuate afterwards it can fluctuate but you know realistic expectations like if we have a mom that's producing maybe i don't know a small amount at three weeks let's just say she takes she's producing one ounce at three weeks where we want to see more like four to five ounces mm -hmm. at three weeks you know realistic expectations like we're going to tweak your volume and you're going to provide breast milk for your baby any breast milk's better than no breast milk, mm -hmm. but we're not gonna go from one ounce to five ounces at three weeks at that point. So mm -hmm. those are the things at that point we kind of tweak and say, okay, let's let's try this, let's do this. There's so many things that we can do to increase it, but realistically it's it's hard to go from a you know, small volume at three weeks to a large volume. Mm -hmm. Well, you kind of mentioned this earlier that one of the biggest questions you get are, is my baby getting enough to eat? And that I remember having that thought many, many times in the first couple of weeks when I wasn't sure if she was latching right. correctly. If she, what are the red flags yeah. if your baby isn't getting enough? Um, output. Your baby will not have the right amount of wet and dirty diapers per 24-hour okay. period. So um, we have a great chart that we send them home with um, for 21 days, and it goes day by day. You can mark off feedings and mark off wet and dirty diapers. So at the end of that day, or I always say, don't wait to the end of the day. If you're midday and you see I have not met any of these requirements, well, I need to step it up or I need to call somebody for help, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but by day five to seven, your baby should have at least six heavy wet diapers and at least two or three yellow loose CD stools mm -hmm. in a 24 hour period, not just daytime, like in a 24 hour mm -hmm. period. And so that is our biggest indicator, you know. Um, other ways are your breast should be full and heavy and tingly. And when your baby latches properly, your baby should gulp, not suck 10 times and then swallow like they do with the colostrum. You mm -hmm. know, so your baby is drinking just like you drink from a, a cup. Your baby, that's what it's going to sound like and look like. Your baby should be gulping from the breast. Mm -hmm. And then your breast should be softer when your baby's finished. And your baby should be happy when your baby's finished. So. Lots of indicators there. And we, we list all that out. We talk about it. it but it, again, it's so overwhelming, you know, but it is listed. Um, we, you know, we flag a page, we refer back to this, you know, and then um, the Woman's Pregnancy app has all of that information too. So we refer to that a lot as well because, um, you know, our generation is definitely more of a digital. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I think, you know, um, and they do, and we, we get a lot of calls about that, you know, about, um, okay, I'm not sure about my baby's output or, you know, mm -hmm. um, is this okay, you know, so, um, but those are the, the red flags or, um, you know, decreased output 
And then um, the pediatrician will be following their weight loss very closely. Mm -hmm. So they, we like them to be back to their birth weight by about two weeks of age. Mm -hmm. And so that's a big um, red flag as well. If they call us at two weeks and say, my, my baby hasn't gained any weight since I was discharged, well, that's, that's a huge red flag, mm -hmm. you know. And of course we refer to the pediatrician, but then we give tips on, let's see, why is this happening? Mm -hmm. You know, why, why is this now going down where we're not, we should be going up, mm -hmm. you know? Well, let's talk about, so, you're home, you've made it through the first couple of weeks, you've finally kind of established, you know what you're doing. There are other challenges that can happen later down the road. Absolutely. Um, me personally, I went through, I had thrush, which mm -hmm. is the yeast infection it can happen in the baby's mouth and, and on the breast as well. I had the clogged ducts. I, again, we had trouble latching. I even had a milk blister at some point, which was the most bizarre thing that I have ever experienced yes, in my life <laughs> and horribly painful. So I mean, what do people or what do women need to know? Now is the time for new beginnings, for holding each other's hands, for encouraging each other, and for working together. At Women's, our mission is to improve the health of all women and infants. So today, we're focused on new ways to care for you and keep you safe. Because seeing you healthy and strong is important to us. What do people or what do women need to know about those potential challenges? Now, they don't happen to everybody. Right, Not everybody right. They them, really they don't can... happen to everyone. Um, and, you know, it, I'm going to say it all goes back to the latch. Mm -hmm. You know, um, a good latch, we should not have um, a lot of breakdown, which is an opening, you know, for the yeast. Mm -hmm. um, a good latch will lead to good um, transfer of the milk so we don't get those plug ducts. Um, so that goes back to that. But... That is, if that happens, um, you know, that those are things that you can, um, you know, we have our little breastfeeding guide, you can refer back to that, mm -hmm. um, and then call us, you know. But yes, there's several challenges, you know, the milk bleb, like you said, which is very it's different. It's bizarre. <laughs> it's really bizarre. Um, and then, you know, the way to treat it is, is bizarre as well, you know. I mean, who would think to put an olive oil, olive oil on a cotton ball and, you know, until that softens mm -hmm. and then falls off, you know. Um, but that, and then yeast, yeast thrush is, is huge, um, especially during the summer months mm -hmm. when it's so warm and it just thrives, you know, and it's very stubborn. So it can go back and forth between mom and baby for months if it's not treated the right way. So mm -hmm. um, I think the biggest thing with that is if you detect anything abnormal, don't sit on it. Mm -hmm. Call somebody. Call us. If we, if we will refer you to your doctor, if we feel like we need to, you know, call your doctor, you know, um, again. Don't rely on other people's experiences, you know, because it may be totally different than yours. And so definitely, you know, reach out for help with either us or, or the doctor, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but, but thrush is, de is definitely um, a challenge. Mm -hmm. It is a challenge. It, it, it really is, you know. Plug ducts can be very, very painful, you know. Um, Engorgement leads to mastitis, which is when, which is of course now you have infection in your body, mm -hmm. and so, um, and that's a problem too. That's a that's a huge challenge. You know, during mastitis, you see a huge dip in your milk supply. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, lot, lots of challenges there, but um, not again, not everybody. You know, that doesn't happen to everybody. But if you do feel like it's approaching, definitely don't sit on it. I would I would recommend you know reaching out. Mm -hmm. I remember I just my thought every time something happened was you know, is this, it was just was so scary because I didn't know what it was. I didn't know how to handle it. And even my mother, who is one of the most knowledgeable people I know about breastfeeding would go, I'm really sorry, but I just don't know what to do. Yes. Like I've never had, heard of anything like that. So I, I think for me, the biggest thing was to figure out that this isn't completely out of the norm that I wasn't right. just like, right. I wasn't this just bizarre medical case that was happening no, with breastfeeding. No, no. It's just more of a challenge than, mm -hmm. than, you know, a, a true, I mean, it is a problem, but you can work through it and, and get past it. But mm -hmm. kind of knowing there are a lot of things that can happen. So if, again, if, if you detect something abnormal, definitely reach out, mm -hmm. you know. Well, uh, and an, another thing about where, where do you turn for support and get those resources? There's a lot of literature out there. Absolutely. Um, there's a lot of websites and social media stuff. Some of the information, it's not, probably not as accurate or as reliable as others. So what's your suggestion right. to find the right resource? So um, we offer our warm line number here at, in the lactation department, and that calls directly to our office. And we do take calls um, every day, you know, seven days a week, eight to four. 
Um, and then we have our, it rolls over to our nursery, which is our, you know, kind of like a, a backup mm -hmm. for when we're not here, you know. Um, so basic, you know, support, definitely call us. We can definitely direct you in the right direction, it, whether, you know, whether it be at the doctor or, um, you know, just want to talk. We have a lot of moms that call just, just to talk, mm -hmm. you know. They just want to hear you're doing a good job. You're doing a great job. Keep up the good work, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I will start with the warm line. Um, we also have uh, virtual consults twice a week, which have been um, really picking up lately. Um, and that is um, just basically a, it's like a Zoom or a FaceTime. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we do them on Wednesdays and Fridays. And that is, it is a $40 fee for that, um, but it's at least an hour. Mm -hmm. um, and those have been very helpful. Um, and I think the thing that is most helpful about that is that we're not, we, we can't put our hands on you and help you. You have to do it yourself with mm -hmm. our instruction. So you learn. It's very hands-on learning. Yes, and you're at, at home in your environment. So mm -hmm. we can say, okay, let's tweak your environment here. Let's, I want you to get some pillows. I want you to, you know, um, get comfortable. You know, you're in your own environment. So it's, it's helpful. I mean, we've had, I've had a lot of moms do it and they love it, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's one option. Um, and then we have our virtual support group, which is actually free, and that's every Friday morning. Um, at 9:15 mm -hmm. on online, so and all that is available on our on womans.org. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is the woman's pregnancy app. So a lot of moms have that during their pregnancy, mm -hmm. and, I did. and then <laughs> um, so once you deliver, you put all your information in, and then it provides you with all of the information for postpartum and breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. And um, everything that we have in our breastfeeding guide is on the breastfeeding on, on the um, pregnancy app as well. I definitely use that to keep track of, of the oh, feedings. Oh, it's a great <laughs> tool to keep track of feedings and wet and dirty diapers, mm -hmm. you know. So. So, and pumping, a pumping, great pumping log, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's, and it, talking about pumping kind of leads us into something else. What if you are a working mom? So I've had that experience of, I was very fortunate that my workplace was very supportive of me, mm -hmm. making sure that I yeah. had the time and the space to pump when I needed to at work. Um, not every woman gets that kind of support in a right. workplace. And also it's, it's a, I've never felt as overwhelmed as when I was trying to figure out the back the to work schedule. plan, yes, because is. I feel like even the literature that I was reading that there wasn't a lot of help. There wasn't a lot of focus on the working mom, which right. most moms do work nowadays. Right. Absolutely. Um, and even again, my own mother who was fortunate, she got to stay home with her kids. My sisters got to stay home with their kids. So that was a different challenge that they didn't have any insight into. So I was kind of figuring this out right. as I go. And that was really, that was tough. It and is. that's when my supply dropped and that it's true. And that, that's things that we don't really talk about mm -hmm. at the beginning because we talk about so many other things, you know, but yeah, that is definitely a challenge. And I think the number one thing for moms to know about that is that um, you know, call us so we can help you establish that plan. But, you know, um, no, it's okay. It is going to be hard. You know, mm -hmm. you've, especially if you've been with your baby all day, every day, and you've been, if you're exclusively breastfeeding and then you transition to pumping, being away for eight to 10 hours a day, you're going to see a dip in your milk supply. Mm -hmm. That's just natural. You know, that's your body detecting your baby's your best pump. So when you go from your baby to a pump all day long, your body is going to take a little dip, not to mention the stress of going back to work mm -hmm. and leaving your baby again, you know, when you're not used to that. So mm -hmm. um, that is, it is normal and it is okay for that to happen. And we, we can, you know, it shouldn't be so much of a dip to where we can't get it back to where it was, mm -hmm. you know. So how do you plan, how do you make a back to work plan? Um, so when you're not going to be with your baby, you do need to plan at least to pump at least every three hours away from your baby, you know, a good 20 minutes because that's what we want to, you know, we want to empty our breasts so our body knows to make more milk that mm -hmm. way. Um, and then, you know, um, we do want to plan on a good pump. You do need a good double electric pump when you're not going to be away from your baby and pumping for that long of a time, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'll always say, you know, when you first go back to work, you know, um, power nurse your baby. Like if you're going to go back to work you know, for the couple week, plan a couple weeks ahead and just power nurse because that's going to increase your supply. So your baby nursing on demand, anytime they show you a sign, which normally at that age when you go back to work, you're kind of on a, on a schedule. Mm -hmm. So those first couple weeks before you go back to work, power nurse, wear your baby on your chest. That is what's going to increase your supply to hopefully when it decreases, you'll be kind of back to that normal, mm -hmm. you know. And then, um, you know, before you leave, you know, it, it, everybody's so different, their schedule, right. but you know, I mean, we, we still want to get those eight to 10 
sessions in in a 24-hour period. Mm -hmm. Whether it's with baby or pump. Right. And a lot of times by that time, you know, babies are sleeping all night. So mm -hmm. that's another thing that you can, you do want to kind of tweak to where you can, you, you can sleep all night since your baby's sleeping all night, you know, but you're not going to do that abruptly because mm -hmm. if your body's used to moving milk every three to four hours at night and you quit doing that all of a sudden, you're going to get engorged. You're going to get those plug ducts. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to run into those issues. And so knowing how to do that to wean slowly and is going to be much more effective than just abruptly because you know, mm -hmm. a lot of times that's why we get those calls is my baby slept six hours last night and I did too and now I'm miserable <laughs> you know um, so yeah but um, so a good plan when you get back to work and then um, you know we have there's you know you, of course your vitamins your diet mm -hmm. you know staying hydrated all those things you know I'll plan to play. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about expectations versus reality. Um, I know me personally, my expectation was that breastfeeding was going to be very easy and that I was going to do it for a full year, no problem. I was going to pump at work and I was going to make it happen. She, I made it six months before I started having yeah, to supplement great, formula. Though. And it, it is. Yes. That's so great. Yes. At the time, though, I was devastated because it you didn't. You felt defeated. I felt defeated. I remember crying on the phone. I had dropped her off at daycare. They told me, oh, we're, we need some more milk. And I didn't have any in the freezer right. left. And I just was like, okay, this is it. We got to start supplementing with some formula. And I remember calling my husband in tears going, I should be able to feed my baby. But... But, but, you know, six months, as you said, that's, that's great. Right. I did a good job. Yes. I just still didn't feel like that because yes. I didn't meet my own expectations. How do you set reasonable expectations right. for yourself? So I always suggest, um, you know, short-term goals. You know, it's especially knowing that those first couple weeks are hard and then you're leading into, you know, transitioning into getting back into normal life, you know, with a newborn and breastfeeding, then transitioning into nurt, uh, work with a new, you know, a, a baby and breastfeeding. So... I think just, you know, set realistic goals for yourself, like another, so, and, you know, rather than saying, you know, yes, we, we want you to breastfeed for a year. We want that goal, but, you know, give yourself a three month increments, you know, at three months, I'm doing great. I'm going to, let's, let's do this. Or, okay, I might need to tweak my, tweak this a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, um, and just have those realistic goals rather than just, you know, aiming, you know, shooting for the moon and thinking everything's going to be 100% okay. Right. <laughs> I wish it would be like that for everyone, but it's, realistically it's not, you know, it's hard. And so, and there's all sorts of issues that, that lead in, that can lead to not being able to, you know, provide milk for a year. And so just knowing that there are things out there that, that's real, you know, mm -hmm. and that we, we can, you know, we can tweak some and some, some we can, it just, it just depends, you know, but having those realistic goals, I think is, is very helpful. Mm -hmm. You know, when we were talking before you, you said something kind of interesting. You said that a lot of times that moms don't necessarily want to talk to a lactation consultant in case they feel pressured to breastfeed if they don't want yeah, to breastfeed. We do have that. Let the, why do you think there is such a, um, I feel like nowadays there is such a breast is best, breast is best, and right. then you have the whole fed is best. Mm -hmm. There's so many messages out there. So how, how does a woman kind of make whatever the best decision is that's best for her and her baby? Right. Um, I think like we just talked about, you know, set your goals. I mean, if that's truly, you know, your goal, then, you know, let's, let's set that and let's look at the, you know, the benefits of it. And, but also realistic, you know, I mean, breast is best, but fed is best as well. Like we don't want your baby at two weeks failure to thrive because you, you did not want to, when you couldn't provide breast milk, you did not want to provide formula for mm -hmm. the baby. That's, that's, um, dangerous. That, mm -hmm. that's very dangerous. So knowing that, you know, you have to do what you can do. And then when you can't, you have to go to the next best thing, mm -hmm. which is, you know, which is formula. I mean, of course, breast is best, but your baby has to be fed and your baby has to thrive and your baby needs those calories, you mm -hmm. know, so many calories a day. And so um, just knowing that there, there is a backup and that it's, nobody's going to be pressured. You know, I mean, if, when you come in here, I mean, we're here for you. We're, we're, we're going to educate you and we're going to provide all the information and we're going to be here to help you, but mm -hmm. it, ultimately it's your decision and mm -hmm. we're not going to pressure anybody, you know, and it's, it's okay. <laughs> and it's okay. It's absolutely okay. You know, um, it's, it's totally fine. You won't, nobody will be judged. Nobody will be, you know, talked about. Nobody will be pressured. Um, we're going to treat, you know, you the same way we we're going to, we're going to treat your neighbor who may be, you know, breastfeeding or not breastfeeding. So mm -hmm. nobody's going to get special treatment one way or the other. Okay. 
Uh, where is the, you kind of mentioned this before, but I want to kind of talk about it again as far as resources for uh, women as, the, as they are uh, going through a breastfeeding journey, if they choose to breastfeed, where can they go? Um, I think you talked about how, you know, again, kind of younger generation, we tend just to Google things before yes. we call somebody. Yes. And it's, I feel like actually talking to somebody though, you get a lot more, mm -hmm. there is something very reassuring of having somebody on the other line going, you're, it's, okay. it's okay, whatever you're doing, yes. you're doing, you're That's doing right. good. Right. Yeah, so um, I think, you know, womans.org has all of our resources here. Um, and then, um, uh, you know, I think I would reach to your pediatrician or your OB for anything further than that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, all right. But yeah, I think, it's, I think a lot of moms do just need to hear somebody on the other end saying, you're doing a good job, everything's going to be okay. And then on the other hand, okay, we, let's, we need to change a few things, mm -hmm. you know. And then by the end of the conversation, they're relieved because... Now they've, you know, they know they have a plan. They know, okay, I should have been doing this, or maybe I need to change this, you know. Um, so I, I think reaching out is, is huge. Mm -hmm. I'm just listening to your conversation. I'm thinking back of all the things that I probably should have done a little different, and it might have led to a very different experience for me. Um, so I wish I had reached out at the time. Um, all right, Cynthia, is there anything else that you would like mothers to know as they are breastfeeding or in the middle of this whole crazy journey that breastfeeding can be? Um, I think just kind of what we started with is, you know, enjoy your baby. You know, um, it's a special time, um, you know, and, you know, that skin to skin is just great for mom and baby. Um, and take one day at a time. You know, that, that's all you can do is take one day at a time, enjoy your baby, and um, reach out when you need something, you know. All right. Well, Cynthia Evans, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to WAFB's YouTube channel for more great podcasts.